You're up. Just yeah. Are we okay? We're rolling. Okay. So, so we're going to have a fox hunt. It's been a long time since we've done this. That's what uh, this fox here sounds like. I don't know. I don't know how to run the other one. Do you know what switches to flip? We'll have to look it up. Yeah, you just turn the switch inside. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it does. Okay. And it says inside. Oh, inside it says. Okay. Well, if it says inside, it's a secret. Well, anyway, another fox. This one, <laughs> this one belongs to the club. Um, this one belongs to W4UVA. It's the same idea. It's just uh, um, same company, uh, just a different device. Um, and this is the one you were listening to a second ago, and the, the one that we'll use for the hunt. Um, so we're going to do a hunt on the 22nd that's a week from saturday uh the uh this actually started out of the aries group we decided that we needed to work on our rdf skills we haven't done anything for a long time and it's something we might be called on to do and we decided that uh you know there's no reason we couldn't have a lot of other people join the party so there will be two teams of aries, aries folks who will be hunting that day uh, they're not cheating. They're not competing in the club fox hunt. They're, they're practicing the way we would really do it, which is teams of people going to different locations and sharing information about what they're finding, because the purpose would be to find the thing as quickly as possible and not competition. Uh, everybody else will be looking for it for fun and, uh, and valuable prizes provided by the club. We've got uh, some uh, Panera gift cards that you can use next time you go to Panera for Saturday morning ham radio fun. Um, and uh, so we're going to start at the Hollymead Town Center in front of Starbucks. Uh, there's Starbucks and then Harris Teeter and then a couple of other things, cell phones and, and frozen yogurt. And so that parking lot. <clears throat> and in fact, Dave and I confirmed today that uh, you can hear the fox I took it and hid it. I, I didn't hide it, but I took it to where it's going to be hidden, and uh, and he could hear it from the parking lot, which I didn't really expect. Uh, but there's a little ridge line behind the shopping center, a road that runs along the the ridge, and you can hear it very well from up there. So, shouldn't have any trouble hearing the fox from the start position. Uh, that won't always be the case. If we keep doing this and do future hunts, it's going to get harder. Uh, but didn't want to make it too tough this time. So uh, I wanted to show a little video about fox hunting. We'll see if this works. It's, it's just finding a source of RF uh, that could be for fun, like we're going to do. It could be uh, power line noise. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to, I'll, I'll kill you. you got it. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I forgot to kill my audio yeah, here. Yep, you're... All right. Um, could be power line noise. It, it could be one of those alien transmitters. Um, uh, but this this happens every once in a while. Uh, you know, a plane goes down up in the mountains. Uh, somebody's somebody wants to figure out where that locator transmitter is. All planes have a transmitter that's activated by an accelerometer and uh, starts beaconing on uh, one twenty one point five, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, you know, we we could find it, um, or we should be able to find it. So that's what fox hunting is about. Uh, if it if it works well, it's just simple orienteering. You go to several different locations. You take bearings toward the where the transmitter you think the transmitter is. You draw lines on the map. 
they cross at a single point and you go there and you found the fox. Uh, the way it really works is more like that because you've got multi-path and reflections and all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Uh, I didn't play any tricks this time, but uh, a favorite trick of people who hide foxes is to put a directional antenna on the fox and point it at a building or a mountain. So the signal's bouncing off something else so it looks like it's coming from over there, but it's really over here. I didn't do any of that stuff this time. Um, to, to do fox hunting, all you need is a handheld radio, really. I mean, people, people have successfully competed in fox hunts with nothing more than an HT. And you can, uh, you can play some tricks when you, uh, when you get close to the fox, uh, close enough that you can't get useful information from the signal strength meter anymore. Loosen the antenna a little bit. If it's, if it's still too loud, loosen it a little more until it's disconnected or just take it off. Uh, you can also use your body to shield. I figure I'm good for about at least 20 dB here. <laughs> and put your body between, uh, between your receiver and the transmitter. And that actually works extremely well. Uh, we did a, a trial run in the woods, uh, County Park, uh, I guess it was a week and a half ago. And uh, when I went out to pick this thing up, when the exercise was over, I just I was standing about this far away from it, and I could get a very clear bearing on it by getting the null with my body in between the transmitter and the receiver. It worked really well. Um, or you can uh, so you can also go with a, a directional sort of antenna, and a very popular first fox hunting antenna is the uh, so-called tape measure Yagi. And, it's literally made out of a tape measure. And I love doing this. So. Instant antenna. Uh, and the sucker works really well. You, you think, oh, this is crazy, but it works really well. And one of the advantages is uh, it, it actually works, I think, better off the backside, I found, uh, because it has a really deep null at the back. Um, the beam width is about 60 degrees, so you don't have a really sharp uh, uh, maximum in front, but you've got a pretty deep null in the back. Uh, but it's great for, uh, uh, in a lot of parts of the world, most, most places other than the US, um, RDF is a competitive sport, and they do it on foot uh, in frequently wooded areas, and uh, timed sport, uh, they usually have more than one transmitter. You have to find them all, or you, you get points for every one you find. And they're running through the woods. And these things, you know, you're running through the woods, you're not going to kill that. Your, uh, your $300 arrow isn't going to last very long running through the woods. So, and you can fold it up or nice and neat or just throw it in the trunk. You're not going to hurt it. Uh, so we built these. Uh, a week and a half ago, the Aries group got together and we all built, uh, the people who didn't already have antennas built antennas. And... Um, and they're, they're pretty spiffy. Uh, you can do other sorts of things. You can buy commercial uh, direction finding antennas. Lots of them are little loops. Um, loops are, are very directional. They're not very sensitive. Uh, but when you're in close, the loop can be really valuable because you don't need a lot of, you don't need a lot of metal to, contact, to collect RF. In fact, you don't want a very sensitive antenna when you're in close. Um, also, uh, the, 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 the good old uh, uh, Doppler systems, uh, uh, Greg's a big fan of these. I think he has one, and, and for PGS. Uh, and the uh, new cousin uh, of that, this is something that uh, has come out of the, uh, you all probably know about the, the RTL SDR dongles, you know, the little TV, European TV receiver that turns out is really hackable and makes a nice general purpose receiver from about 50 megahertz up to 1500 megahertz, something like that. Well, uh, there's a, a group that did a Kickstarter. They took the chips. They didn't take five of these little $15 dongles, but they used the same chipset and they put them together in a single case with a single timing source. So they're all receiving in phase. And so you can use phase arrival, uh, phase information for the signals arriving at five antennas that are spaced in a regular pattern. And, uh, and you fire it up 
whoops, where's my picture? Oh yeah, it's right there. You fire it up and it says, that's where it is. It's that direction. You know, it, it, literally you just get a picture. It shows you which direction the, the transmitter is. Uh, I didn't bring it tonight, but the really useful thing is what's called an offset attenuator. When you get in really close, you know, most of the radios that we have these days are just plastic. So when you get in close, you're receiving a significant amount of signal through the case of the, the radio. So an offset attenuator is just a simple oscillator. Uh, in most cases, it's four megahertz and, uh, and it uh, beats against the received signal and moves it four megahertz um, off the transmit frequency. And so you're not listening on the frequency that the Fox is transmitting on. You're listening four megahertz away, which is far enough that you get around uh, the overload problems. And then you can uh, do some attenuation and dial down the sensitivity. Uh, and a lot of people use their 3D printers and make little grips for their antenna that has their uh, attenuator built into it. Uh, and then there's, there are a million other things. People who are serious about fox hunting have come up with all sorts of really creative uh, techniques and tools. And there's a lot of stuff online. Uh, there's a site I put in the uh, announcement for our fox hunt called Homing In, uh, which is dedicated to all things fox hunting, uh, both the, the kind that we're gonna do a vehicular hunt, but uh, there's also a lot of information about competitive fox hunting, the so-called ARDF, amateur radio direction finding. And, um, uh, and there are competitions all over the world. There's national championship, there are prizes, it's of some sort, gotta be careful about that stuff, of course, but you're not transmitting. So you're not really using your license. You don't have to be a ham to do this. Uh, so, you know, if you've got people who are sort of mildly interested, this is a good first thing to expose them to. Uh, it's, it's fun. You're driving around. Hopefully the weather will be perfect and, uh, and having a little contest. And so, you know, it can be a, a good first exposure to ham radio for somebody who's uh, expressed an interest. So again, the 22nd, 10 a.m., the first team will start. Uh, so be there at least 15 minutes early. There'll be a few last minutes and last minute announcements. People need to get their coffee and and they need to be fully caffeinated to do this. And their prizes. And I think that's it for me. I think you've heard from me enough for one night. So any other questions? Which do you have? Uh... Which plans did you follow for those particular antennas? Uh, we used the ones off that homing insight. He's homing. he's got a pointer to another guy's site, okay. and we used his his plans, I and they're pretty well one, done. I saw another one with a wood mass. Yeah, there are, people have rung all sorts of changes on this, um, but uh, we just went with the one that the homing in Excellent. guy recommended, and it's really really simple. He gives you the the lengths to cut for the pipe, the lengths to cut for the elements, and um, uh, and, and we all added a handle. He doesn't right. tell you to make a handle, but it's much easier to use right. if you make a handle. You just, what do you have for a match? Uh, it's just a hairpin match. Okay. And uh, you're never going to transmit through this. It's right. not a transmit antenna. Um, so uh, very simple match and, and just using the hose clamps to connect the coax and the, and the hairpin to the sanded down spots on the tape measure elements. Just like so, the tape on the heads? Uh, and electrical tape on the end to keep you from cutting yourself. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's like you know ten bucks worth of materials, and uh, if you if you do it a few times, you could probably make one in fifteen minutes. So when you're in the distance, you're using the broad gain of the antenna, but then when you get to the last mile or two or half a mile, then you're using the back to get a null, right? Right. Right, and so Dave. Close in a mile or two. Well, uh, no, close in probably more like uh, measured in yards or hundreds okay. of yards. Uh, the, um, but 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 yeah, it could be anywhere. Uh, and again, I, I I tried to make this one not terribly difficult, so the fox won't be in a tree. Uh, it won't be hidden under a bush. It'll be in plain sight, and uh, and you can hear it from the starting position. 
uh, in a lot of hunts, they set it up so you cannot hear it from the starting position. You have you have no clue when you start. Would you be willing to do this maybe in the spring? Yeah, yeah. A lot of clubs uh, who are really into this do one every month. It sounds like a lot of practical. Yeah, and uh, I haven't looked into it very much, but uh, some clubs have come up with scoring systems so they can keep track of, you know, when you get so many points for winning and so many points for finishing second. And so people can have bragging rights and a trophy that travels and some of them really get into it. So, so you don't shoot the fox. No, do not shoot. <laughs> if you shoot my fox, you can, you can buy the club another one if you shoot it. How about that? Yeah. So it does sound like a lot of fun. And it's been been too long since we've done them. Colorado people would do this even in the snow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you have one piece of velcro tape that you can use to put the whole thing back together? Yeah. So I just. Um, can you show us it opening up from those? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Wasn't it? <laughs> pretty, pretty cool. That's it's it's it's, it's worth it. It's worth it just for that, you know. Put those all there. A little bit of Velcro. But you know, that tosses in the trunk really, really nicely, and you're not going to do any damage. Yeah, and I know it's fine. I love it. I love it. The high point of the talk. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. That's right. Don't you have a question? Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, let's see. This I've got this one tuned for uh, 146.565. That is sort of the unofficial fox hunt frequency. It's, it's coordinated. People frequently use that frequency At for. At minimum, wouldn't you need an HP that has an equivalent of an S meter? You need some sort of signal strength meter, yeah, yeah. But I think even the bat lines have it. Yeah, yeah, they all have at least you know five or six bars. They'll show you something. And uh, oh, another thing you can do is, uh, if you don't have an offset attenuator, you can just tune off the Fox's frequency. You, you know, you get. Five kilohertz off or ten kilohertz off to the side. It's pretty significantly attenuated, and you want to open your squelch. You, squelch is the enemy for fox hunting. You want to hear? Uh, you'll, you'll miss it if you have the squelch closed. In fact, Dave said it, with the squelch closed, he couldn't hear the fox at all from the start point. But since he opened it up, he heard it. Although, although I actually found that for me, the squelch was more helpful than the uh, the S meter because what I would do. Is set the squelch to a certain level, turn till I couldn't hear it, turn till I couldn't hear it, it must be there. Then as I got closer, I could turn the squelch up higher and I had to be, yeah. be good. I had to start oh, the signal to hear it. So using it as an audible indicator, there are uh, there are uh, attenuators that have uh, a beeper built into them basically, and, and it's connected if you've got a, a radio that you can pick the signal strength off of uh, and do something with it, you, these things will generate a tone and, and higher means more signal strength, lower means less signal strength. So you don't have to look at the meter while you're running through the woods. You can just hear it whistling at you. So yeah, it's interesting. And I think some, some potential, uh, I, could see, <clears throat> I could see doing something around this for a scouting event in the future. There are, uh, there are people uh, who, love to do orienteering as a hobby. Uh, I don't know if people people ever hear of geocaching. Yeah, geocaching. The, 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 the geocachers and fox hunters ought to have a lot in common. Uh, geocaching is, is hiding little uh, packages, little caches. Uh, people hide them and other people try to find them. There's a geocache that is very, very close to where we're being. If anybody is familiar with that particular ah, one, ah. and that one there is a really tricky one. Ah. But if, there's, if you're in a geocache, it, it, it is a ball. And, uh, our son Victor got the merit badge, and I went out with him a couple times. Oh, there's a merit badge. Yeah, there's a merit badge for geocache. Wow. We, had a, we had an absolute blast. That was one of yeah. the most fun things.
Yeah, our granddaughter, one of our granddaughters was into it for a while and, and we, we made a, a cache and hit it. Oh, good. And, and somebody stole it. Oh, no, that's because anyone <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Who's Does anyone fox hunt on 450 or other bears? Uh, no, that's a great question. Uh, so uh, most of the fox hunts are done on two meter FM, but uh, people also do, uh, the competitive folks uh, do both um, VHF and 80 meters. They do fox hunting on 80 meters. Chapter so, four, which in your way. all sorts of different challenges. So yeah, I could see uh, there. There's a lot of potential here for uh, people to get interested in this. What I like about it is you see a little bit of home growing, farming, mm -hmm. yep. and then teamwork. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can make T-shirts and say, "Oh, this quilt." Uh, <laughs> the uh, Frank, Frank had a question there. Frank, what was that? Oh yeah. Again? I just go ahead and just say it. Uh, w4 and ui was trying to say something okay uh, yeah okay so that, i uh, just zoomed to people going ahead and try uh try getting the question if, it, if we're having trouble hearing you just put it in the chat window and i'll and i'll pass it on that's fair i should be able to see the chat window here yeah. all right I stopped the screen. The chat window it says any questions via chat from it all right and that, yeah, that, 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 was, uh, that was me. W4NUA. Unfortunately, I can't hear. Yeah, he's saying W4NUA, but I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't hear the question. Can you, uh, yeah, can you put it in the chat window possibly? Yeah. Have you got it? Uh, no, we haven't haven't seen it in the chat window yet. You you, you may have to hit enter or send to, to do it. Okay, well I was a fox one time back in the early sixties on a fox hunt in Charlottesville. Okay, yeah, he was it was saying that uh, uh, that he had done done one in the early sixties, so we can ask him. Did you wear the narrow ties and the white shirts? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. You guys wear those white shirts and narrow black ties back when you did fox hunts? Like in the <laughs> Is video? That, that pretty snappy looking, I think. <laughs> Look like a whole bunch of IBM sales reps. <laughs> you know, always, they always come in a bunch, don't they? Yep. They never come by themselves. <laughs> the, uh, I had the uniform. Yeah. I worked on IBM marketing. Oh, you did? Okay. So you had the uniform. I was white, a white white shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Dark suit. Yeah. 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 And never travel alone. <laughs> All right.